We examine the causes and effects of the second industrial revolution. The changes in science and technology toward the end of the 19th century led to a second industrial revolution. This revolution would be fueled by steel, electricity, and oil. In 1856, Henry Bessemer engineered the process that would use high temperatures to remove carbon from iron to produce steel. It was lighter, durable, and cheaper. It built the modern city. By 1910, Germany was producing 15 million tons, and the U.S. Pro was producing 24 million tons of steel to help build the 20th century with ships, rails, bridges, tools, cars, planes, and skyscrapers. The Second Industrial Revolution used the new innovations in the atomic theory in order to find the benefits of chemistry, which included medicines, perfumes, soaps, fertilizer, and Alfred Nobel's dynamite. Other scientists like Faraday, Tesla, Westinghouse, and Edison were experimenting with elements that could be used to generate electricity in order to create a world that could operate 24 hours a day. Being able to run a factory 24 hours a day meant an even larger boom in mass production leading to surge in labor jobs. To make even more goods in an efficient manner, entrepreneurs installed the assembly line, which would see one worker doing one task throughout their shift and passing the object down to another worker who had another task until the product was complete. This process also allowed for interchangeable parts, which allowed repair on an, of an item rather than throwing it all away, leading to a larger service economy and production of heavy industrial goods, machines designed to make other machines. All these changes also led to a revolution in transportation with railroads allowing goods and people to cross continents. Inventors like Benz, Daimler, and Ford created automobiles off of Nicholas Otto's combustion engine, creating shorter distances and the need for national road projects and side service industries. Gustav Whitehead and the Wright brothers' experiments with the airplane allowed people and goods to move through the air. The way people did business changed, with the ever-increasing growth of large corporations who dominated the production of certain goods like Carnegie Steel and Rockefeller's Standard Oil. These companies required investors, which led to the selling of public stock. Consumers and reformers worried that laissez-faire economics allowed for the growth of monopolies and trusts. Business owners saw it as the fulfillment of Adam Smith and social Darwinism. The best corporations were those that provided the best goods and services.